is everyone i hope everyone's still holding on through this pandemic these are difficult times and i hope all of you are really really safe and secure so today i thought i'll discuss very upcoming topic you may or may not have seen it it's about the role of t cells in covid or sars cov2 so this video is both for medicos and non medicos because we are in the midst of a global pandemic and in this case information is a knowledge so everyone should know what we are into right now let's start by looking at some numbers and how the world is doing right now in terms of coronavirus <music> As on 15th August of 2020, there are about 20.9 million confirmed cases worldwide, out of which there are 13 million recoveries and about 760,000 deaths. The top three leading countries with the highest amount of cases and deaths are U.S. followed by Brazil, which is followed by India. So the CDC claims that. out of all these cases 40% of the cases are asymptomatic so there's a lot of researchers doing a lot of study trying to figure out why that is so what is it that makes people asymptomatic what is it which determines the severity of the disease what is it that determines who recovers who doesn't who gets worse so in terms of the disease and getting well or coming out of covid disease there can be two factors one is basically the virus itself that means the amount of the virus or the genetic makeup of the virus or its virulence another factor is the host factor which means the age host is us the age of the host the health status of the host genetic factors of the host so these two are the main things which determine the disease course let's quickly talk about our immune system in an overly simplified manner i'd like to clarify here that I am not an immunologist or a pathologist but I've just overly simplified immunity or the concept of immunity in our body so that it's easier to understand what we're going to discuss mainly there are two types of cells in our body immune cells in our body one is the B cell another one is a T cell so B cells are the one that create antibodies against any pathogen or antigen that enters our body but what a lot of people don't know is for the b cell to produce the antibody the t cell needs to give the b cell a signal for the t cell to get triggered a virus has to trigger the t cell so t cell can be of two types there are helper t and cytotoxic t which is not very essential here let's just remember that there are something called t cells which stimulates the b cells to produce antibodies so when a virus enters our body or uh, that we have various cells like macrophages which eat up that virus or take it and present it to the t cell and the t cell further tells the b cell to like produce antibodies and kill the virus so all of this time most of our attention was on the antibodies produced and we were studying how these antibodies are produced how much of it is produced and all of that good stuff but recently the attention has gone from the antibodies to the t cells and i'll tell you why Uh, what research has found is uh, that the amount of antibodies against covid starts to fade within 20 to 30 days after covid-19 symptoms emerge so there was a paper published in the science journal called nature in july 2020 and tonedo and his co-authors they found that after studying 23 candidates from the who suffered from influenza SARS 2003 pandemic they studied their samples and have seen that even after 17 years the T cells are still present they found that the T cells are still present in these individuals bodies that means that T cells have memories and if they were to get infected by the same virus they will uh, fight back so let's talk about why why we are interested in this t cell response this is all because of the concept of herd immunity herd immunity is basically the idea that a disease will stop spreading once enough of the population becomes immune to it this can either be through getting infected by the disease on itself that's like a natural immunity that develops in our body 
or through vaccinations. So assuming that each infected person can affect about three other people, that's called the secondary attack rate. So if out of these three people, two people are immune somehow through the disease or through the vaccine, then the virus can attack only one, the, the remaining one person. This means that fewer people are affected by the illness. So even the people who aren't immune to it, they end up being protected as they are less likely to be exposed to the virus. According to epidemiologists, at least 60 to 70% of the population needs to be immune to a disease for herd immunity to develop. But these are uh, statistics from previous infections like polio or some other virus. So about COVID-19, this is just a tentative figure. Even 50% of the population are immune. Maybe for COVID, we can develop herd immunity. But this is not very well studied and it's still a very controversial topic. So a perfect example of where COVID-19 was overcome by herd immunity is Sweden. So Sweden is an example of what herd immunity looks like even without lockdowns and masks. So based on serology testing, about 20% of Stockholm was infected by April. So deaths peaked in Sweden in April. Today, the pandemic is over in Sweden and with zero deaths and very less new infection to this date. So but looking at the spectrum, we can't just come to a conclusion taking just one country. Let's look at the other spectrum, which is the slums in Mumbai, India, and also Peru, where the situation is kind of getting worse. In Indian slums, currently, according to studies and according to research, apparently more than half of that Mumbai slums are infected by coronavirus. So last month, the researchers in Mumbai slums took about 7,000 blood samples from the people living in the slums and they found that 57% of the blood samples tested positive for corona antibodies. Could it be that herd immunity is appearing in that population? It's very difficult to say because a very renowned researchers, uh, one of them has said that herd immunity is actually occurring in Mumbai slums, whereas another one has claimed that that is impossible, that it's not occurring. So it's a very controversial topic right now. But even if Mumbai slums have developed herd immunity, the price paid was too high to get to this immunity. It comes at a very high cost because in overall India, there are 2 million coronavirus cases out of which 5% are from Mumbai. And as of Monday, this Monday, there are more than 6,940 deaths in the city. This is exactly why Indian health authorities uh, say that the country is not aiming for herd immunity because this is not feasible for large countries like India. Malnourishment is very rampant in very poor regions like the slums in Mumbai and in Peru. So, and it's well known that T cell function is reduced in the malnourished. So that could be a reason why it is, the situation is very uh, different from Sweden in Peru and in the slums of Mumbai. So let's go back to the 23 individuals who were studied from the SARS 2003 pandemic. Along with the T cell function that still remains in their body, there is another finding that is that all the 23 individuals who were studied, they showed a cross reactivity against the SARS-CoV-2. That means the T cells uh, are also protective against uh, the COVID-19 virus for them. This is called crossover immunity. There's a study that was done in the online journal called The Cell, which was published in June 2020. And this study studied basically T cells from two uh, groups of people. One group was the patients who are post COVID infected. That means they've got COVID infection and then they've recovered. And another group was random blood samples from the year 2015 to 2018 of blood donors. That was much before the COVID era. So what they found in the post COVID patients is not anything surprising. They found that there was almost 100% reactivity in T cells that means the T cells were active because they were just infected that makes sense but what is uh, boggling is that the samples which were taken from blood donors from 2015 to 2018 showed 40 to 60 percent of T cell recognition of SARS-CoV-2 so let's compare this to the CDC values that 
CDC says that around 40% of all the people infected by COVID virus will be asymptomatic. I don't think that's a coincidence at all. That means that these 40% of the people who are infected and who are absolutely asymptomatic probably already have T cells which have overcome the infection even before it could mount like a symptom or something like that. That means that many proteins that are on the surface of SARS-CoV-2 have similar structure to other coronaviruses. Coronavirus is part of a family called coronaviridae and a lot of common cold, about 15-20% to 20 of common cold that happens on a daily basis is also caused by a strain of coronavirus. This crossover immunity can explain why so many young and middle-aged people are asymptomatic even when they are positive for a COVID. So it is likely that the other T cells recognized the virus and mounted an immune response even before mild symptoms even surfaced. Apart from the article that was published in Cell, it has been found in other countries as well, like in Germany, they found that there was 34% cross-reactivity to SARS-CoV-2. In Netherlands, there was 28% cross-reactivity. In Singapore, there was 58% T-cell recognition to SARS-CoV before being exposed to the virus. So what does this really mean for us? This means that all of our previous common colds and runny noses actually prepared us to fight the COVID-19. That means that COVID-19 virus structure resembles even the common cold virus. So it's not exactly novel anymore. Novel means new. That means it's not a new virus. It resembles other virus from its family that's coronaviridae. Another question is why is it hitting old people so hard? Just like we discussed how T cell function is decreased in the malnourished, it is also well known that it decreases with age, also decreases in immunocompromised individuals. But it is obvious that coronavirus strain that has attacked us is way more severe than the previous pandemics that have happened. So yes, it is taking a toll on our elderly and immunocompromised. So we've spoken about the host factors that can affect the course of the disease. So let's talk a bit about the virus itself and how it can determine the course of the disease, whether it's gonna be mild or more severe. This is where virus amount or the inoculation size comes into the picture. This is where a mask comes into a picture. As you know, a mask is something that WHO, CDC and all other reliable sources are asking us to wear. They say this is the most important and the most useful way to avoid the coronavirus from spreading. What happens is when we wear a mask, a fewer viral particles get out, infect another person. That person will, his body will get sensitized to those few viral particles and mount a T-cell response and that will just give him a very mild or asymptomatic disease, but not something very severe. Now compare this to somebody who's not wearing a mask and say he's coughing up millions, billions of viral, viral particles and it affects another person who's not wearing a mask. That million billion inoculate or that much virus is going to go and give that person a very, very severe disease as compared to somebody who's masked, giving it to another masked person. Where this mass efficacy can be seen is in countries like Singapore, Vietnam, Czech Republic, even India. We have a, uh, There are a lot of cases in these countries, but the death and the severity is lower than other countries. If the inoculate is smaller in size, that means if the virus is less in amount, that means there will be more asymptomatic cases rather than very severe cases. So guys, that's about it. That's That was our topic for today. It is a very upcoming topic and I'd like to put a disclaimer here that research is still ongoing about the antibodies and T-cells and everything related to COVID-19. It's still in its early stages, so the findings are very preliminary. They are bound to change. Also to keep in mind that each virus can trigger dramatically different antibody response in different bodies, different individuals and this response can vary from person to person and this is going to be a very upcoming topic in the next few months and i hope more and more people talk about it so i think in bigger countries like india and places where herd immunity has too much of a price to pay a vaccine is our best bet so here's to hoping that research keeps on going i hope there are breakthrough discoveries about COVID more and more and that we overcome this pandemic soon. So please wear your masks, sanitize your hands, maintain distance. Uh, we'll wrap up for today. Thank you so much for watching this, guys. This was a very interesting topic for me to read up and there's a lot of 
updates coming on this topic i hope that they make some breakthrough discovery with this new new found knowledge about t cell memory and its use and also new found knowledge about uh, the crossover immunity which we can use against coronavirus so let's quickly recap what we have looked at in this video so this video was mainly to talk about t cells in covid and how it can be useful to mount an immune response and how how that has affected different countries after that we spoke about herd immunity and crossover immunity we spoke about how herd immunity was useful in a country like sweden whereas on the other hand it know whether it's effective or ineffective in india also another country where herd immunity was attempted in the beginning but which took a very horrible turn that was uk they had left it to herd immunity in the beginning it is one of the countries with the highest mortality rates right now also ultimately we spoke about the virus and how the inoculate uh, amount really matters and how wearing a mask is very important that just about sums it all up if you like the video please leave a thumbs up subscribe to my channel leave some suggestions for my next videos and let me know how this video was i have a really important exam coming up so i'll be posting my next video only uh, in about mid september take care and i'll see you guys in my next video